Hey guys, it's Kevin, my review for Bohemian Rhapsody. And what this remake of Suspiria is essentially about is it takes place in Berlin in the late 1970s, and basically there's this girl Susie, she goes to this dance school that also happens to be run by a coven of witches, and we also follow this character named Dr. Joseph Klemper, who is someone who uh, lost his wife in World War II, and since then he's kind of been a bit lost, and when one of his uh, patients basically ends up um, bringing up to him this idea of this coven, he starts to kind of research it more, and eventually he does become a lot more involved, and that's really all I'm going to say. So, obviously, I was hyped uh, for this remake. I mean, I've made it very clear before, this was my most anticipated horror film of the entire year. Even after knowing Hereditary existed, I was still hyped for Suspiria. Suspiria is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I think it's such a creative and different sort of horror film, and uh, it's one that I don't think has gotten enough attention. Sure, it's become a cult film, but I don't think it has gotten enough attention, and with this film, you know, I was really really hoping that it would find a way to maybe expand into some of the mythology a little bit more, uh, but also hearing Luca Guadagnino, you know, was doing something completely different, I was very excited to see how this would turn out between the cast and um, the director and, and all the talent on display. There was so much hype for it, and I am very happy to say that Suspiria did not disappoint me at all. This is easily one of the most creative and, I think, impressive remakes of the entire decade. I mean, there is so much to love about this film. It's very slow moving, but it also is probably one of the creepiest films I've seen all year. But we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And I'll just say right now, this cast alone is one of the best ensembles of the entire year. I really don't think there's anyone in this movie that doesn't give it 100%. I think really everyone absolutely gives it to their fullest potential. Let's first talk about Dakota Johnson, who I thought completely anchored this entire film. I really loved what she did here, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think this is the year where Dakota Johnson really turns her career around as an actress, and if this film is any indication, that is absolutely going to be the case. Not only is she so dynamic in this role, and so impressive with her range, but it's one of those roles where you just are able to get so much out of her, and Susie alone is a very complex character, far more complex than her uh, late 19, than her 1970s counterparts. Uh, you know, the one from the Argento one is far less complex than this iteration of Susie. There's a lot more to her as a character, and I really did love diving a lot deeper into that. And like I said, Johnson just absolutely goes for it. I loved what she did here, particularly in the third act of this film. She has some really meaty scenes, and I was very impressed uh, with what she did as an actress. And like I said, after this film, I think we're definitely going to be seeing a lot more of her, and I sincerely hope we do, because I think she absolutely killed it here. For me, though, easily the standout of this movie is Tilda Swinton in the three roles that she plays. All three, I think she absolutely kills. But let's first talk about her as Madame Blanc, because I really loved her in this role a lot. This is someone who's very mysterious and very cunning, and someone who is very cutthroat when it comes to the dancing. And her and Dakota Johnson's chemistry, I think, is one of the best parts of this entire film. Some of the best scenes in this movie are just these two getting to know each other. I really love getting into that character, and she really does pull it off. But for me, her standout role is easily her performance as Dr. Joseph Klemperer, who... I was honestly astonished when that news came out that, you know, she was playing the doctor, and it absolutely pays off here. I mean, sure, the voice is a little bit higher pitched than others, but voice aside, this is an incredible performance. I mean, just seeing her bait and switch from how, um... Madame Blanc walks, and the way Madame Blanc, you know, uh, you know, asserts herself into certain things, and the way that Klemperer is, is completely different, and it makes you forget that this is the same actress. I mean, she just absolutely kills it in this role. Klemperer, I think, is probably the best character in this entire film. I'll get to that more with the writing, but I really loved what she did as this character. You really do feel her to completely transform into this old man, and I really loved what she was able to do uh, in this film. She is one of the role in the movie that I'm not going to get into, but 
honestly, if if it was up to me, I would say she is a lock for Best Supporting Actress, but unfortunately, I think she's going to be horribly snubbed, and I think that is definitely probably a, a, a huge shame, because she absolutely just dominates this entire film, and I think it definitely shows the true range that she really does have in an actress. I've always loved Tilda Swinton, but this film just made me, just, just really upped my appreciation for her to a whole new level, and I really loved what she did here. And then the rest of the cast, I think, also really does kill it. Mia Goth gives the best work I've ever seen from her in this film. A very quiet but effective performance as sort of the moral compass of this entire film, if you want to not count Dr. Joseph Klemper. Out of all the girls of the dance school, she's definitely, like, the most level-headed, and I've really liked where they end up going with her character. Chloe Grace Moretz is fantastic here. She's not in the movie that much, but for what she has, she is really great. Uh, the other actors that were in here, Angela Winkler, Sylvie Testud, um, you know, all of the actors I think really do an incredible job in this movie. Like I said, the ensemble here is one of the best of the entire year, and I truly do think everyone just gives the performance of their careers here. But now let's get to the directing and the writing, because that is really, I think, that uh, makes this film stick out. I mean, sure, the cast is fantastic, but uh, per Luca Guadagnino's directing is unlike anything I was expecting it to. I mean, I'm not even going to try comparing this to the original film because it's simply not comparable. This is a completely different film altogether. The original film, you know, it was much more over the top and uh, it utilized a lot more campiness and it leaned very heavily on that. This film is much more grounded and realistic and very eerie and I think that immediately uh, just sets it apart from the original and makes it stick out. And again, because of that, I'm not going to just compare this to the original constantly because like I said I just don't think they're comparable but that aside his directing here is still phenomenal I mean what he's able to do with this film from scene one you are just in it you can tell the type of tone that he is trying to go for here it's something that it's very eerie and it's very quiet but he really does lean into it um, in a way that I really wasn't expecting him to and I really loved what he was able to do here the film definitely is scary but its main purpose is actually not to scare you it's to yes it is to elicit a reaction out of you but it's not not necessarily to scare you. It's not really to shock you either. It's more to give you, I think, a more in-depth look at the story overall, and I think he does a very good job with that. The movie definitely is very scary. There are a lot of moments that are very haunting. There's a lot of moments that are going to remain ingrained in my mind forever, but I think what he's really trying to do is he's trying to set this in a more grounded reality, and he absolutely pulls it off here. I really loved what Guan Yuna was able to do. You know, I really enjoyed his work in Call Me By Your Name a lot, but this film proves me that he is one of, I think, the best, um, you know, master crafts working today, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do next. I think he just really, this was very much a passion project for him. Uh, from what I understand, this is something that him and Tilda Swin wanted to work on for like 30 years, and you definitely did see that passion here. He really did do a great job, but the writing as well, I really love in this film, because like I said, again, I'm not trying to compare it to the original original, but the thing that this film does differently is that because of certain things, you know, in the original that were, um, <clears throat> and again, I'm not trying to compare this film to the original at all. That's not what I'm trying to do here, but there are some things where it is kind of hard to talk about without really getting into it. Also because the film is very much enriched in spoilers. I, I hope you guys understand that. There's a lot of things I'd love to get into, but it it's going to lean, it you know, it's going to delve into spoiler territory, so I'm going to try to refrain from saying as much as I can. Um, but what I will say is that what I love about the writing in this film is that certain, you know, right from the first scene, you know this is going to be a completely different film. And the thing that Guan Yun is able to do very well here is he's able to take the things that we loved about the first film, certain iconic scenes that we expect, and he does them, but then he takes so many hard left turns. And it's one of those things where it shouldn't work. It's like, why would you go in this direction? But considering what the story is trying to do, it actually makes a lot more sense. Certain things that are twists in the original are not twists here. Certain things that we weren't able to delve as into as much, like the Coven, for example, we get into a lot more. The politics especially of the Coven, I found really fascinating. There's a very interesting debate going on with them, and I really loved it a lot. It's kind of a commentary on the politics of today, and I think they did a very good job with 
we're doing that. There's a lot of subtle things that Guadagnino is trying to say in the script because it is far more complex than the original, but it never feels like it's preaching to you. It feels like it definitely does have a purpose, but it also is able to do it from a story perspective, and that's something that I really did love about it a lot. It's just because the fact that the film is a lot more, it's, it's a lot different, and like I said, it's definitely a lot more complex. It's able to give you a lot more things to think about, and that's something that I really loved that Guanyin was able to do with this film. But the thing that really does impress me about Suspiria is the other half of the film, the inclusion of Dr. Josef Klemperer, who, in theory, yes, I will admit when the film started, I'm like, this is kind of superfluous. I don't really know why he's here. But as the film goes on, you know, there's there's one scene with him, and it's very important. Like, the first scene of this movie is probably one of my favorite first scenes of the entire year because it just sets out the atmosphere so well. But from that point on, you're like, okay, why is this guy still in the movie? What is the point of him? Why are we still seeing him? And when we eventually get into, you know, what he's, what he's going through, his plight, all that stuff, you know, his failure to really um, help some of, you know, help some of these people... Uh, it's very effective, and I think out of everyone, um, I think Klemperer probably has the most tragic arc out of everyone in this movie, and I really did feel the most attached to his character. One scene in particular with him in the third act of this movie honestly had me near tears. I I'm not going to lie to you. It was that effective, and I really loved what they were able to do with him, and I think if you cut him out of this movie, this movie is just simply not as effective, and it doesn't have as great of a story. I'd love to get more into his story, but again, I, I just I don't want you guys to know a lot going into it, and I think it is best to be very tight-lipped about it, but I will say that he definitely has a very integral part of the story. He is uh, very much, um, you know, an important part of the story, and if you cut him out, I don't think that the film would be nearly as strong as it really is, because I really do think he, out of, you know, there is a lot of great stuff in this movie, like I said, but I really do think at the end of the day, he is the character that really does hold this film together. Even people that don't like this movie, I know most people have said their favorite part of the movie is the dialogue. Doctor, and rightfully so, because he is a phenomenal character, and I, I loved his inclusion in the film. It really did, you know, feel like it was getting that point across that Guadagnino was really trying to communicate here. But that's not to say the dancing isn't also phenomenal, because they really do get more into that. You know, certain things like, what is the purpose of this coven? What are they really trying to accomplish? You know, how is this coven still able to go on? And the way that is brilliantly um, presented by having the film set in a realistic time period, you know, with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and people constantly thinking that, you know, um, you know, that, that thinking that they're gonna, people are going to come after them. I mean, you get the sense that there's just so much more chaos going on in this world that it makes sense why a school like this would be open, why no one would really be investigating it, why it would really only be this one psychoanalyst that is looking further into it, because the fact that there's just so much more going on that this does get overlooked. And again, you can make a lot of modern day parallels to that, but I thought it was a very smart choice to do that because I know that is a nitpick that people have had with the original, and this film does a very good job with setting it in a, um, you know, very, like I said, realistic Berlin of that time period. And, you know, there's a lot of modern, there's a lot of uh, references to what was going on in that time period, and none of it ever feels like it's forced. None of it ever feels like it's there because because Luca Guanyu is trying to give us a history lesson. It makes a lot of sense why it's in there from a story perspective, and I really did love that a lot, and I thought it was definitely a very smart choice to do that. But going back to the other characters in this movie, they're also very well done, and a lot of them are not what you'd expect them to be. The character of Susie especially, without getting into too much, she's not really like the character that you know in the 70s film, and I thought that was a very smart choice overall. I thought the character of Susie, where they end up going with her, her dedication to, you know, the uh, Dance Academy, all that stuff, was very well realized, and like I said, her and Madame Blanc's relationship is really really one of the um, main components of this entire film, and I think it definitely is one of the most interesting parts of this film as well. I really loved what they end up doing with her and a bunch of the other characters here. I thought it was very well realized in that regard. Now, while I'd love to get more into the writing, like I said, it's really just going to delve further into spoilers, so I'm going to try to stop here and move on to the cinematography, which is just 
exquisite. I mean, it is some of the most beautiful, but also some of the most horrifying cinematography I have seen all year. I mean, just... The because yes, and don't don't think that because of the fact that Guadagnino is stripping away all of the neon and primary colors from the original and making this one a lot more grainier and a lot more like I said eerie that that is somehow going to take away from the visuals of this movie because it absolutely doesn't. I mean, there are some beautiful shots in this film, particularly in the third act. There is this one scene in particular, this one sequence in particular that I think is so beautifully filmed. There's a a lot of great tracking shots here. There are a lot of great, uh, like, lawn shots and things like that. There's, like, a one-take scene that I think is very effective. There's just a lot of great filmmaking on display in this film, but particularly the detail in the dance school. I mean, it, it is a huge area. There's so many various locations to it. There's so many things that I think are going to stick with you after you've seen this film, and there are some things you truly are never going to forget, and I really do applaud Guadagnino for going there. A lot of directors would try to overlook this. A lot of directors would try to kind of, um, you know, they, they, they would try, they, you know, a lot of directors would try to lessen a lot of the stuff that he does here. And sure, the film is very violent, but it never comes from a gratuitous perspective. It, it shows very well um, why it is as violent as it is. And again, there are some scenes here that are quite terrifying, and there definitely are some scenes that I'm never going to forget, and that's something I really did love about this one a lot, and again, that is very much thanks to the cinematography here. But the other thing I loved about the cinematography is what it does with the dancing in this movie. The dancing was in the original, but it never really played the part that it did here. Uh, the dancing in here is just, it's on another level. It's one of the most important parts of the story, and particularly what they end up doing with it. It's not really what you'd expect. The dancing is really impressive. I mean, Dakota Johnson, from what I understand, she did all of her own dancing, and it's incredible that she was able to train as much as she did when she's not a professional dancer. You would absolutely think she is if you watch this movie. Um, but what they end up doing with the dancing, I've truly never seen it done like this before. Uh, it's very hard to watch at points, and it's very uncomfortable, but again, I really do applaud Guan, you know, for going there, as a lot of directors, like I said, would try to shy away from it, and I think the cinematography is just very beautifully presented here. There's one particular dance scene in this film uh, called, it, called Volk, and uh, that entire sequence is just, that's top 10 best sequences of the entire year for me. I mean, I, I love that sequence a lot, and uh, there are many sequences that are like that, but that's really the one that does stick in my mind, and I think after this film, you're never really going to look at dancing the same way again. That's really all I'm going to say. One scene with a mirror in particular very much does come to mind with that, and you're really never going to be able to look at it again after watching this film. In terms of the score here, it is easily one of my favorites of the entire year. Sure, it's very quiet and calming, but that's really what I think makes it stick out here. I mean, Tom York did a great job with getting so much out of so little. I mean, from a music perspective, there isn't a lot sonically going on. Yes, there is a lot of intense, you know, rhythms and things like that, but the music itself is very calm. But there are two tracks in particular, there, there are two, um, you know, uh, tracks in particular in this film that if they are not at the very least nominated for best score at the Oscars, I will be outraged because I truly do think it is one of the best scores of the entire year. It carries the entire film so well. Um, especially the uh, Suspirium, the title song here, I think is very effective, and Unmade as well. I mean, Tom York just really outdid himself here. I really do want to see him compose more films because he absolutely has it in him, and I, I really can't wait to see what he does next. I think he absolutely killed it here. And the editing. A lot of people I know, they're going to go into this film, and they're going to be scared by the runtime. They're going to be intimidated by it. I personally was never worried about the runtime because they did exactly what I expected them to do. By having this runtime, it really does benefit them overall. They're able to dive deeper into things that they weren't able to in the original. There's a lot more, the characters are a lot more well fleshed out. The mystery is expanded a lot more. There's the added story with uh, Yosef Klemperer. And considering how complex the story was, you just couldn't 
couldn't have told the story in two hours. You really needed that extra 30 minutes, and I do think they utilized it quite well. In fact, the film really did fly by for me. I really was not bored at any point in this film, and that's something that I'm very surprised to say. This film is 150 minutes, and it really did fly by for me. And look, I can understand if someone did uh, feel, you know, if someone was bored by it, but I personally was into it the entire time, and I think it is probably one of the most um, investing watches of the entire year. I was so invested in what was going on. It's, I think, definitely one of the most engrossing experiences, and uh, for me, it's one of those films where it, it needed to be long, and I think it very much utilized its runtime here. As far as flaws with this film, with a film that is so dynamic and a film that is so different, it's very hard to find a flaw here. However, I did find a couple. I will say, as much as I do love all the characters in this movie, there are some that I think they could have given a little bit more to. One character in particular I wanted a little bit more from. They ended their arc a little bit too early, and I wish we got a little bit more um, with them here and there. And I will admit, this is one of those films where it is presented in sort of like a non-linear fashion, and I don't really know why. Guan, you know, he tries to split it up into like six chapters and an epilogue, and to me, I understand he was trying to be like this grandiose epic, and he absolutely did that, but I don't think you needed this film to be separated into chapters. There's nothing that really makes it separate from each other. Uh, like, sure, they do all have, like, endings, beginnings and endings to them, but I really did not see the reason to divide this film into chapters. But really, other than that, guys, Suspiria is easily one of my favorite films of the entire year. This is a very creepy, very engrossing, but very rewarding watch overall. It's a film that I, is definitely not for everyone. A lot of people are probably going to hate this film because of its length, because of its uh, how grotesque it really is, and because of its very lengthy and complex story. This is one of those films where there are a lot of things they'll give you in the beginning, and they won't make sense of it until the very end, and I think it is very effective in that manner. Um... And like I said, I think a lot of people are going to dislike it, but I personally think it is one of the best remakes of the entire decade, just because of how different it really is. I mean, I truly have never seen a, a remake like this that completely changes the story of the original. It's still respecting the source material. Like, for those who are worried, it does still respect the source material. It does still respect the story that Argento did create. It's just kind of building off it and veering off into a completely different direction that I really did love here a lot. I think Luca Guanino does some of the best directing the entire year. Tilda Swinton, I mean, she should be a lock. She's not going to be, but she absolutely should be a lock here. And that alone is enough of a reason to watch this movie. But then when you uh, couple that with, like I said, the incredible cinematography here, which is so dynamic and um, just in depth, and there's a lot to love about that. Tom York's uh, very haunting and beautiful score that I really loved a lot. And just the story overall, what they're able to do with these characters, the way they're able to flesh out the coven more. I mean, there's so much to love about Suspiria, and there's so many things that I'd love to say, but again, this is just a film that I think is best to go into not really knowing a ton. It is much more of a rewarding experience in that way. It is a film that's definitely not going to be for everyone, but if you want to see it, I would absolutely say see it as soon as possible. It is definitely one of the best um, remakes of the entire decade for me. I absolutely adored Suspiria, and I am going to give Suspiria an A. Wow, what a great year for horror, guys, honestly. Between this, Hereditary, A Quiet Place, uh, a few other films that I'm not thinking of right now, this has been a really stellar year for horror, and hopefully 2019 can keep it up. You know, 2017, you know, we've seen some really great years for horror, and this is definitely one of the best of the decade, and this is definitely one of the best ones out there right now, for sure. But if you guys have seen Suspiria, let me know what you guys thought of it. Did, you know, would you compare this to the original, all that stuff? I tried to refrain from comparing it to the original, even though I did several times. Um, you know, I tried to do my best to try to just look at it as a film. But it's one of those films where you can't help but do that because of how different it really is. Um, you know, it, it, if you haven't seen it, see it as soon as possible. It is definitely the highest recommendation. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.